On behalf of the Lebanese Student Organization at The Ohio State University, I would like to welcome you all today to a special event, an event of big significance to all of us at the organization. And we are grateful to have many of you over here sharing our joy. A big special welcome to uh, Dr. Nasir Kawar for attending our little gathering and welcome to ICU, Doctor. Uh, we are looking we are looking forward uh, to your interesting talk in a couple of hours. I want that Dr. Kawar is giving a, a talk a couple of hours from now at Cotman Hall, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Many thanks to the Arboretum and the Middle East Studies Center for, uh, for inviting Dr. Kawar. Are you all hearing me? Yes! <laughs> uh, also, we extend our gratitude to our friends from all over the university, especially the folks at the Ohio, uh, at the Office of International Affairs. We are here today to dedicate the newly planted cedar of Lebanon tree at the Chadwick Arboretum and Learning Gardens. First, first let me start off by giving credit where it's due. I would like to thank the director of this wonderful place, Miss Mary Maloney. This event wouldn't have been possible were it not for her assistance, extraordinary efforts, and energy. We contacted Mary back in early February with a simple request, planting a cedar tree sponsored by the LSO. The reply was quick, positive, and to our surprise and good luck, overly enthusiastic. So Mary personally overlooked the execution of the entire process, from finding the best source to ordering the plant, and then finally planting the tree a couple of weeks ago, thanks to the help of the, uh, the workers here at the Arboretum. She has taken our request, a simple wish in an email, and made it a reality, a cedar tree, right here on campus. Mary, on behalf of the LSO, thank you very much. Second, uh, a few words about the LSO. I consider myself lucky enough to have met the founders, all of whom are here, most of whom are here with us today. Dr. Hala Zahreddin, over there. Dr. Nadim Bakkar. Uh, Serene Marcosian, she's not with us, but uh, in spirit she's here. And the soon to be Dr. Nael Alemi. So, good luck. The four of you carried a seed inside of you, much like all of us. But you came together, worked together, and with your combined effort, planted that seed a bit more than three years ago. It was the summer of 2006. For that, I want to personally and deeply thank you for establishing an organization striving to serve the students coming from Lebanon and Americans of Lebanese descent at one of the largest universities in the United States. The LSO was founded to provide a platform for continuous dialogue and interaction among members with the goal of improving student life and creating an environment that will help enrich the student's professional experience. Since its inception in summer 2006, the LSO has been increasingly active in campus-wide events representing Lebanon and its culture. The young organization, while disproportionate in numbers to the many ethnic groups here on campus, has gained a very solid reputation, measuring up to its members' ambitions, expectations, and endless energy. The LSO has also made many remarkable achievements over the past years, from raising money for the Lebanese Red Cross, to spreading awareness through movie screenings, and participating in the stable event of the year, Taste of OSU, a huge entertainment and culinary event hosted by the Office of International Affairs. Allow me to digress here a bit. Ever since we started participating in that big event, Taste of OSU, the LSO was able to secure a top spot among more than 20 organizations. This past year, the LSO made it big. Our cooking team won second place for best food category and our traditional dance troupe won third place for best performance. <laughs> and as you can imagine, that's a lot of people working together hand in hand. Well, not the cooks, but the dancers were really hand in hand. <laughs> More recently, the LSO successfully hosted its very first photography exhibition, sharing pictures taken by members uh, in Lebanon and the Middle East with the campus community. We also partnered with the campus dining services to offer campus residents and undergraduate students a Lebanese menu in their cafeterias. Our traditional dance troupe has represented Lebanon at a number of festivals and events in Columbus, Dayton, and even in Louisville, Kentucky. The LSO has won the 2009 Outstanding Student Organization Website Award, and now here we are planting the LSO cedar tree at the Chadwick Arboretum uh, on the Ohio State University campus. Having mentioned these few things, let me address the founders again, the, orig the original planters of the seed. I hope you're happy with your, with your seedling. 
It's always good to note and remember that we, members of LSO and friends like you, we are walking cedars. And as much as we are young like this tree, but we again, much like the cedar, have to grow to fill up a big reputation. Which leads me to the cedar itself, the Cedrus Libani, synonymous with greatness and majesty. The tree that covered up the slopes of Lebanon, parts of Palestine, Syria and Turkey, was regarded as the most prominent and impressive tree in the old times. The cedars have been famous since the very ancient times, living in myths and real history, in poets' admiration and kings' adoration. That's my speech to mine. Oh. <laughs> Quoting from Dr. Kawar. <laughs> we got it from the same source. Maybe. Uh, it has been mentioned over 30 times in the oldest written story in the history, the Epic of Gilgamesh. I actually did a small search and I found that the name, the name Cedar is present on all but the first of the 12 tablets of the epic. A bit of history, the Phoenicians, the earliest residents of Lebanon and famous men of the seas, used them to build their ships. In the third millennium before Christ, the city of Biblos, one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, prospered from a flourishing timber trade from the cedar forests. The famous kings and emperors from Mesopotamia to the Nile and priests of the ancient world all wanted to use the cedar for their temples and palaces. Cedars were not only used in the mummification process in ancient Egypt, but also to build one of the oldest, largest, and best preserved vessels from antiquity, the Khufu ship, dating back to 3400 BC. These mighty trees, used to build the famous temple by King Solomon in Jerusalem, were mentioned 75 times in the Bible, in all contexts of divinity and majesty. Hence, it came to be called the Tree of the Lord, a designation still living and used in our current days. However, not all mentions of the cedar were that positive. In some cases, the context was of the tree's blunt arrogance and its defiance of the greater power. An arrogance that, I'm sorry to say, was actually mirrored in the people of the past centuries, whose blunt disregard of nature resulted in massive deforestation that has plagued the forest of Lebanon, turning abundance into rarity. However, the tree lives on. A verse in the Lebanese national anthem, which we just sang over here, says of Lebanon, its pride is in its cedar, its symbol for immortality. The cedar is the emblem of Lebanon and adorns its flag, as you can see. It is to the cedars that the, that the people of Lebanon turn their eyes, for they symbolize the Lebanese spirit and the thousand years of history that lies like a blanket over their country. And to the cedars, many concerned eyes are turning, much like Dr. Kawar over here, raising awareness and encouraging preservation. So we again invite you to attend his talk in a couple of hours. Last, as Lamartine, the French poet, said in mentioning the most famous natural monuments in the world, the cedars know the history of the earth better than history itself. We hope that our little tree here lives and flourishes to witness the future of this earth, this land, this campus, and this arboretum, to see them flourish and prosper. Well, we have no doubts, with the likes of Mary and the good folks, over here at the various campus institutions, we are absolutely sure of the coming prosperity of the Cedars' new home. In saying so, I come to the end of I, what I wanted to say today. I hope it wasn't too boring. At the end, I will allow myself to repeat again. Mary, thank you so much for your help. If you may, uh, the members of the organization would like to offer you a personal uh, thank you, a personal certificate. Uh, for uh, of appreciation for your assistance and for making all this happen so please come forward <laughs> Mike come and stand with me Mike yeah. is the horticulturist Mike Pfeiffer Mike who planted the tree thank you Mike <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank, thank you so much. And uh, actually, Mary, we're not done yet. <laughs> we're not done. <laughs> As well, the members would like to donate a small amount to the arboretum in hopes that we make annual contribution to help you take care of the tree. So please accept our donation. The size of the check is proportional to our gratefulness, not the amount. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh! Thank you so, so much. Uh, Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Someone yes, can you catch this?
This you, you can cash it at any bank, yeah. <laughs> uh, again, I want to uh, thank you all for attending. And 